Okay, today what we're going to talk about is potential energy functions. And to do that, I want to take a look at a roller coaster and a roller coaster track. Um, and so to understand a potential energy function, how it works and how, how it ties back to what we've already done, I want to just take a real quick look at work itself. Now remember, work is given by the infinite sum of f of x dx, or this could be in any axis. I'm just choosing the x-axis, and you'll see why in a minute here. Uh, but work being done is given by this function. Uh, so in a situation like this, where we have this cart on this track, work is being done by gravity. There's only a few forces acting on this cart right here, gravity being one of them, the normal force being the other. So long as we say this is frictionless, uh, we only have two forces. Now, normal force never does any work on this cart because the cart never actually moves perpendicular to the track itself. The cart stays on the track, at least hopefully it does. Uh, so, what we have is simply gravity doing work on this cart, and that's important. Uh, that's important because gravity is a non-conservative, or sorry, a conservative force. That is to say, it's never gonna change the total mechanical energy of this, this cart. And so, if we were to look at this, if we wanted to know the total work by gravity, we could just look at the force by gravity on the cart, and then look at the displacement of the cart vertically. And this is how we wind up with things like our equation for potential energy, uh, gravitational potential energy being mgh. Now, yes, we are assuming that this roller coaster cart is not so tall that it extends off into space or some you know enormous distance where the force by gravity changes a non-negligible amount. So we, we're just saying, Gravity is mgh, or potential due to gravity is mgh. And we actually derived this by looking at work done by gravity or the work to lift an object. And so there's a relationship between the work done by gravity as this cart moves downward and the change in potential. Uh, now it's tempting to say that the work done by gravity as the cart goes from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill is equal to the potential, or even the change in potential, but that's not true. Once you realize as this cart goes downhill, positive work is done by gravity, and what that means is there is a loss of potential. The potential decreases, um, and that's because, remember, potential energy is stored energy or, or work that some force could do. As we allow gravity to do work, it has less energy stored, or it could do less energy or less work, that silly thing to say. And so we get into this, this strange idea of potential energy functions, and I'll make the jump from here to potential energy function in just a second. The potential energy function is really taking a look at the potential energy as a, wait for it, function of some other variable. In this case, it makes sense to look at the potential as a function of position. Now I want you to realize the gravitational potential that is stored uh, in this cart or within the gravitational field as a function of position is proportional to the height of the track. I'll explain what I mean there. At this point right here, this cart is very high off of the ground. So it has uh, a great deal of potential energy because the height is large. By the time it gets here, relative to this line here, or this height, which we'll say is zero, there's no potential left. As this goes back up, it's gonna gain some potential back. Right? And we could have this oscillate over and over again because gravity is a conservative force and so we're ultimately never gonna change the total mechanical energy of the cart. We're just gonna shift it from being uh, potential to kinetic. And I want you to realize when we're talking about potential energy functions, a potential energy function is nothing other than a, a graph or a plot or a function for the potential. And in this case of the roller coaster, it's proportional to the height of the roller coaster. I mean, when the roller coaster is really high right here, at this height, it has a lot of potential. When it's here, it has none. When it's here, it has some. And so really, this roller coaster is nothing other than a graph of the potential. Now, I don't want to sit here and try to come up with an actual mathematical function for this, some kind of weird sine theta thingy. Um, I don't want to play that game. That's not what we're doing here. I'm looking at this conceptually. And so if I was to graph the height of this, which is really just draw the track as a function of position, that's proportional to the potential. And the proportion would simply be mg. 
So, in trying to relate work back to a change in potential, uh, and really relating forces back to changes in potential, I want to combine this and this formula here. And, and you'll see why in a second here. Remember, this work is done by some force which acts over some displacement parallel to that force. And that's going to cause a change in potential. Now I can rearrange things a little bit. I can differentiate each side. And what we wind up with is a force is equal to negative du over dx. Now let's talk about what this means, because this is the big takeaway from this whole discussion of potential functions or, or um, potential energy functions. Let's talk practically about what this means. If I have a function like this roller coaster, what this tells us is that a force is equal to the slope of our function. Okay, uh, and, and think about this. If I've got a roller coaster car and it's going down this hill, it's being pushed to the right effectively. Um, as it goes down the hill, the steeper the hill, the greater the force on the cart. That's all this function is saying. Um, now, as the potential is decreasing, that is the result of gravity doing work. That is the result of the force by gravity. I'll back this up here a little bit. If a gravitational potential energy decreases, that is the result of the force by gravity acting over some displacement. And so this, this idea of potential energy functions, it's been floating around since we first started discussing work and energy. And it's shown up here uh, when we were talking about gravitational potential energy. And it showed up when we were talking about things like the actual equation for gravitational potential energy, which was actually I'll write it down just for funsies, negative G M M over R. You'll remember, we, we actually had this equality showed up sort of logically in the derivation of this. And so this idea of gravitational potential energy functions, it's showed up. And these don't always have to be related to gravity. It can be any potential energy function. Um, you could just turn this into pure math and say there's some function, uh, some number. Take the derivative with respect to position, flip the sign, and now you've got force. Now, the only big catch is this only applies when we're dealing with conservative systems or really when we're dealing with conservative forces. Uh, so with what we've discussed uh, so far in mechanics, that would be springs and gravity. But hey, take a look at springs for a second. When we went through and we said for a, a spring, said f was equal to negative kx, and this was really f of x. Well, then we found the energy stored in a spring, or the elastic potential, was one half kx squared. Well, look at the relationship between these two. Take the derivative of this with respect to x and flip the sign, and what do you have? You have the force by that spring. This has been hiding out in everything we've done in energy so far. It's just a different way to look at this. If you really want to math it up, um, you can just throw some function in here and all of a sudden it kicks out some, some supposed force. Um, realize this has been showing up all along, but it's just a different way to talk about all the things we've already been doing. So this is really our, our equation for what we call potential energy functions. Uh, it's really just looking at this function and its relationship to potential backwards or rather than looking at it as an integral, looking at it as a derivative. And on that note, that's all for now.